let's talk a little bit about vasectomy and really what a vasectomy is, um, because some of you have had one too. And then I think it's important to know that as a gentleman who has had a vasectomy, there are some things to think about long term. You know, like we do know that with vasectomy, whether it's short term or long term, just depends on the gentleman, there is a little bit of a decrease in testosterone. Um, so let, let's talk about that because I love it. I think that vasectomy is considered safe. It's considered reliable. It's considered kind of a low complication method for male birth control. And honestly, I feel like we don't use it enough. So um, what I want to do is kind of show you some pictures of the anatomy so that you can kind of get an idea of exactly what a vasectomy is. Because one of the questions I get all the time is if I get a vasectomy, am I going to have a Am I going to be able to ejaculate at all and, and uh, things like that? And I think that those questions just kind of come from just maybe not necessarily really knowing our anatomy quite like we should. So if you look here, this is a picture of a vasectomy on the right. This is one way of doing it. And so if you notice here, when we are cutting for a vasectomy, when we are now, you know, I do not perform vasectomies. I am not a urologist. So I want to put that out there. So, so a vasectomy is all happening within your scrotum, right? So, so when, got, when we talk about the snip snip, we're not talking about a big massive procedure that anyone goes in. We're actually talking about a small, sometimes it's an incision, depending on who the surgeon is. And sometimes it's just a blunt instrument that kind of goes through the skin, pierces through the skin, isolates the vast deference in, in that area, and actually ultimately performs either a snip snip, depending on the person. Sometimes they might use cautery. A cautery is like heat, um, heat, heat to kind of burn the ends of the tube. Sometimes they, they'll use suture, as you see in this picture here, which is, you know, basically a thread, a surgical thread. And sometimes, you know, old school will actually literally cut it. And what, what we're cutting is, take a look here. So if you notice this tube kind of loops behind the bladder and empties into what's called the seminal vesicle, right? So just to kind of show you where this is here, this, this tube that everybody th thinks will interfere with ejaculation, actually this tube here is going to empty back here, right? So this tube, so sperm is literally like 5% of ejaculate. It really doesn't take up much of the ejaculate volume. So basically what happens is once you, this incision is made here, now the only sperm that you have left that could potentially be in the ejaculate is the stuff upwind in here. So naturally you're going to still have some sperm that are swimming around in there before the procedure. And so that's why ultimately after they do a vasectomy, they're like, come on back. So we can test your semen and make sure that there's not a lot of sperm there because basically um, as the sperm in this area starts to die out, then they can say, okay, now you're shooting blanks and you don't have to worry about it. But up until then, they actually want you to wear condoms. Sometimes that takes eight weeks. Sometimes it takes 12 weeks. Sometimes it takes four weeks. It just really kind of depends on how strong your swimmers are in the first place. But I also want to bring a note to the fact that as this is happening, you know, as we're looking at, at, at the, uh, at the scrotum and the, the sac, if you notice there's blood vessels, there's veins, there's arteries, and there's nerves there. So this is why it's important to ask your friends, Hey, you've had a vasectomy. Who did you go to? Did it, did it work out? Are you happy with it? Because really, honestly, if the surgeon's having a bad day, if the surgeon happens to be drunk, or, or if you happen to have anatomy that's different than what the surgeon anticipated, they can actually mess around and snip and cut a blood vessel, cut a vein, cut an artery, and then have to repair it. So one of the potential side effects is hematoma. So that's massive bruising or swelling um, because maybe the vein was cut. And so as a result of it, the blood flow out, flows out and it ends up with a swollen testicle. But I think one part of the vasectomy that I really wasn't aware of until I went really hard into the space of treating male patients is that for some guys, they will see a major decrease in the amount of testosterone that they're producing afterwards. And so when you look at the literature, everything's like, no, you should have the same amount of testosterone. But there are actual studies that show that immediately following vasectomy, 
there tends to be a dip in the amount of testosterone that you're making, but typically over time, testosterone levels start to go back up. Now, I also want to want you to be clear on the fact that testicles usually shrink after a vasectomy, you know, like it may not, may not be noticeable to you, but you'll start to notice that you do expect a little bit of atrophy or shrinkage of the testicles. And, you know, honestly, it never made sense to me how we could tell patients, no, nothing will change. No, testosterone levels won't change. No, blood flow levels won't change, but we will have some shrinkage of the testicles. So something is changing, right? If the testicles are going, are going to shrink a little bit. So typically after vasectomy, um, it's going to take around 15 ejaculations or more for you to expel all of that sperm that was kind of left right in there it's to the point where you're shooting blanks. Now, another thing that we really don't talk about much is that now once we have take, gone to the point where we have opened up um, you know, we've snipped this area and we've opened up, we've exposed your sperm pretty much to, to your bloodstream. What can happen is the body develops what are called anti-sperm antibodies. And so typically about 70% of guys after they have a vasectomy, when they check, you have floating and circulating in your body, something called anti-sperm antibodies. Now, back in the nineties, there was a theory that if you have anti-sperm antibodies, which basically means your body is like, wait a minute, there's sperm floating around in the bloodstream. It's not supposed to be in the bloodstream. It's supposed to be in the testicles and, and in that process. So now that it's in the bloodstream, let's attack it because it's a foreign invader, right? So antibodies develop to it. So back in the nineties, there was the idea that because you had anti-sperm antibodies, now your body is on high alert and could potentially form antibodies to other parts of your body. So there was an idea that maybe through vasectomy and now developing anti-sperm antibodies that maybe they were taking guys who were having um, vasectomies and predisposing them to autoimmune issues so that you would end up having auto antibodies against, you know, maybe your blood cells or a- antibodies against the pancreas and develop some form, form of diabetes, auto, uh, you know, then maybe lupus or different things like that. So that was one of the theories. Now, most of the studies tend to show that they don't think that that's what's happening. There was also some early data that started to suggest, eh, maybe by snipping the vas, the, the vas deferens, maybe we're creating issues with the prostate. That seems to be disproven. But they also noticed pretty early on in animal models that when they cut the vas, sect, the, the vas deferens, during a vasectomy, that they had a decrease in testosterone. And typically what doctors say, well, is, well, don't worry about it though, because you got two testicles and as a result of it, you should be okay. But I do think it's important. And I don't think that they tell you that enough, that there is usually a dip in testosterone. And in a lot of guys, it comes back up. And in some guys, it does not come back up. Okay. But I notice in, um, in our Western medical culture, testosterone is kind of seen as one of those things, ah, you know, you got enough of it, so it's no big deal. But I think you should be clear on the fact that this is potential, this could potentially happen to you. So potential side effects, there could be an infection. Now, as we talked about with vasectomy, and I put the picture up, you know, there's a couple different ways doctors can do it. They can either go in and burn or cauterize the, the, the vas deferens. They can go in and um, do sutures like you saw in the picture where they're actually kind of sewing the areas closed. Um, they can actually go in and um, do a procedure where they take the sheath or the lining of the vas deferens and they kind of pull it up and they uh, create kind of like a fake barrier between um, the areas so that that sperm can't travel up, right? So I think it leaves a lot of people asking, well, if the sperm can't travel up, what happens to the sperm? Well, typically what we see happen with the sperm is sperm starts to kind of die off. Um, but we do see sperm kind of getting out into the bloodstream a little bit. That is how the auto antibodies form. So, um, there's some guys that you'll meet will tell you that, uh, the vasectomy was the best thing that you've done that they've ever had. And I see more of that. And I see less of the guys saying that it really didn't do them right. So I want to be very clear about that. 
But I also think it's it's cl- to, to keep in mind, it's important to keep in mind that for some guys, they may continue to have a little bit of pain in that testicular area or anywhere in that scrotum area for uh, more than two months. You know, that, that chronic pain can last sometimes you know, for a year, a couple years even. So it's, it's important to keep in mind that chronic pain can potentially be a side effect of that. And then I also think it's important for you to know that depending on the method that they use, so you want to talk to the doctor and say, well, what are you going to do exactly? Are you going to make a cut or are you not going to make a cut? Are you going to burn it or are you going to cut it? Like what is your procedure specifically, Dr. X? And keep in mind that when it comes to vasectomy, the, the risk of infection kind of goes up on, on the ones that are doing the cautery or the burning. So you, you know, you probably like, well, shoot, doc, go ahead and burn it and cut it and snip it. And so it do everything possible, but it's important for them to then let you know that, okay, well, we can do that, but there is a higher risk of infection associated with the cautery version of it. So when you're talking to a potential surgeon, you want to know what procedure is it that you're going to do? Are you going in? Are you cutting it? Are you cauterizing it? Are you making an incision? Like, what is your process? What is your personal infection rate? You know, like how many of your people end up with these massive infections? And you want him to talk you through potential complications and risks and the percentage of guys that actually end up having that, right? Because not all surgeons are created equally. Now, there's a, a, a number of people, too, who will get a vasectomy and then meet the love of their life later or want to get somebody pregnant for whatever reason and want a reversal. Um, and there are doctors that specialize in reversing the procedure. But keep in mind, too, that once your body has developed auto antibodies to the sperm, there's a potential that now your sperm is pretty damaged and now they're going to have to do maybe even a little bit of IVF or something like that when it comes to it. Now, people ask all the time, what about vasectomy and erectile dysfunction? Now, when they go back and survey guys who've had vasectomy and they try to, you know, survey them at different moments in time, what traditionally seems to happen is that guys say they have a bigger sex drive, that they have better erections after they've gotten a vasectomy. And some of that we attribute to the fact that, you know, now you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry about getting anybody pregnant. So you're more comfortable, you're more confident, you know, it's one less thing to worry about. Um, and, you know, you can just full speed ahead without thought. Another thing to keep in mind too, is that when they interview um, and surveyed female partners of men who had had vasectomies, they too reported greater sex drive, you know, better orgasm and things like that. And we attribute that to the fact that now she doesn't have to worry about uh, unnecessarily getting pregnant. I mean, and in, and, and in the climate that we're in now, there's so many, so many less options for you if you do happen to have a oopsie daisy that people can rest easily when they've had a vasectomy or when their partner has had a vasectomy. So I think that that's really important to keep in mind. So there's no real data that seems to suggest that guys run into erectile issues after having a vasectomy. Um, And the big data seems to point more towards testosterone levels. So just know that if you do have a vasectomy, that you might see a plummet in your testosterone levels, but you also might see those levels come back up which is why you do all of the things necessary to boost your testosterone. Because if you think about it, you know, when we look at the anatomy that we show there, when, when it really comes to um, testosterone levels, and let, let me show you this diagram, you've got to think of it like this. So this is after vasectomy. So when you see this blue area here, this is, the vast deference. This is where vasectomy is taking place, right through here. Let me get a different color. It'll be red. Right through here. But if you notice, it's really close to the blood supply for your testicles. So it makes sense that since the, the, the testicles really only have about three arteries for most people that are bringing blood flow down to it, it appears that in some cases there's a decreased amount of blood flow getting to the testicles. So you want to stimulate the testicles long-term. You want to make sure you're giving those testicles a nice massage because, too, 
If you're on testosterone, if you've had a vasectomy, now those two together will cause some shrinkage of the testicles. I think though that Western trained doctors, we just kind of feel like guys don't care that their testicles are going to shrink. So we don't even mention it, but I think it's always important to know that these types of things are potentially possible. Awesome. And then I want, I want to show you too, I want to show you why there's no decrease in ejaculate, right? Because this is the way the course that sperm takes right? It's going to start in the testes. It's going to go to the epididymis and then it's traveling up the vas deferens, right? That's the thing that we're snipping when we're doing a vasectomy. And then it's going to the seminal vesicle, right? So now the seminal vesicle, so if you cut the connection between the testicles and the seminal vesicle, now you're not getting any sperm there because keep in mind, that most of the ejaculate is made between the prostate and the seminal vesicle right in through that area. And so this little 5% of sperm that's making up the volume of your ejaculate, you shouldn't really notice much difference in the amount that comes out after you've had a vasectomy. So I hope that clears that up. Awesome.